Hi guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are all doing well and thank you for all the support and respectful comments that you leave on all the videos. They do not go unnoticed. I just wanted to quickly put this video out to show the clips between Nicole Kessinger and Chris Watts about their lazy dog date on Saturday, August 11th, the Saturday before the murders. And the reason I find this relevant right now is because in Ronnie's recent interview, he was asked what he and Chris spoke about on their ride from the airport to the police station. And Ronnie stated that Chris just kept saying, I should have gone to the game that night. And what you know, Chris would be referring to is on the night that Chris got the babysitter and went on this date with his mistress, Jeremy Lindstrom, his friend, had asked Chris, hey, do you want to go to the Broncos game with me instead of the alleged Rockies game that Chris had said he was going to? And Chris ended up obviously going out with Nicole Kessinger. And in Chris's prison interview, he, you know, he's asked about the lazy dog and he states, that he wished he hadn't have gone. He felt like God was trying to give him an opportunity to get out. That was his last chance to get out. A light switch in my head goes off, a light switch in her head goes off, and things may have gone a different direction. So I just find some of the words that Chris uses around the lazy dog very telling. And then when Nicole Kessinger is asked about the lazy dog and what their topic of conversation was, she can't really remember but then she says oh it was about you know going back into his my fitness pal and dialing in everything like that and she remembered that he used a baby blue credit card instead of the anadarko gift cards so again her selective memory sticks out to me another thing that stuck out to me in kessinger's interview talking about the saturday night you're going to hear this in the video she says that chris seemed disconnected from the apartment idea on that Saturday. So again, take everything you hear for how you will. I would love to hear what you think in comments. And um, yeah, I hope you all have a good day and thanks so much for stopping by. But that's when she started talking, wanted to talk more. She was pretty mad. Yeah, she, I mean, it was, I, I already kind of knew that, you know, I, using that credit card, it was kind of, it was, was that intentional? Yeah. I had no other way to do it. Oh. I like, you know, I, I used to, like, because I got these Anadarko gift cards from, like, you know, you know, doing good stuff at work and yeah. stuff like that, and I had to use them all. Oh. Well, was, was part of you just like, I screw it, whatever, I don't care, I'm using this card. I, I was, I, part of me just wants to say, Nikki, can you pay for this? But right. I just, I don't know. Yeah. Even, I think, um, my, my attorney said she even knows I used a different card, like a blue card. Uh -oh. mm -hmm. Maybe she thought, you know, like I felt comfortable enough just using a normal bank account or something. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you know, I told her I was going to Iraq, and I told you, told you I was going to Iraq. Yeah. And it was just like, you know, it, even, uh, it felt like, you know, like looking back at everything, like just like reading the scripture more and more now, I can see like, you know, God told, like gave me opportunities to get out. Like even my friend Jeremy uh, Lindstrom, he even invited me because like it was his daughter that came and watched the kids on Saturday, that Saturday night. And he was like, hey, you said we're going to a Rocky game. You want to go to me with the Bronco game and watch the Arizona Cardinals? And like in my mind, it was like, you know, go. Just, uh, just yeah, just, just say, hey, I, I, can't, I can't find a babysitter. Bye. <laughs> Nikki. Yeah. And maybe that would have been like, you know, you know, like a light switch in my head goes off, light switch in her head goes off, maybe it just like goes different directions. That was kind of like my last like opportunity to kind of get out, it seems like. I, I wish I would have said, yeah, let's go. <laughs> yeah. And I think that would have just put me on a different trajectory. So then, Shanann, did she actually say you're never gonna see the kids again? She said that to me before. Yeah. You know what you're saying? Yeah, like he was prepping. It still sounded like he was prepping. I mean, everything he did sounded like he was getting ready for everything to happen. The only thing that I found really peculiar about the whole situation was the fact that he just kind of seemed disconnected about the apartment thing on Saturday, whereas in previous conversations, he was the one who brought it up, and he was the one who seemed really excited about it when I offered to help him do some like legwork on 
trying to find him a spot for him and his girls. Right. I'll be right back. Okay. Saturday during your dinner, um, what, what kind of conversation would you guys have? Uh, I don't even remember. Oh, I, uh, so he's been trying to, like, eat a little healthier than he normally does. And he's always, like, been in the working out since I knew him. And he, like, tries to eat clean. But he was trying to, like, step it up a little bit. And nothing like the people who do, like, the competitions and the shows that are all super restrictive. I mean, it was nothing like that. It's just, like, day-to-day -day general maintenance. But it's how I eat. And it's pretty healthy. And, um... He's been losing a lot of weight. He lost, I want to say, like, 13 pounds in the time that we were hanging out. And honestly, when you start eating a little bit cleaner and you start working out a little bit harder the first couple months, especially for a man because they lose weight faster, it's not something that's, like, that drastic to me. But it did stand out that it was, like, a little much. And so I was like, whoa, like, maybe you're not eating enough macronutrients so let me look at them so he had been working on his my fitness pal app i'm like programming like all the stuff he eats and i just started going through them and i was like trying to figure out like where his ratios were and we actually spent a lot of time doing that because he'd asked me to do it for him um because i just was at the point where i was like if his weight loss slows down in a few weeks he'll be fine and if it doesn't then his macros are a little off. It's not like that big of a deal, like in the workout community. This is like a very normal thing. But Did I you just have any other outside concerns, like potential drug use, alcohol use, any of that stuff that that led you to go, hey, he's lost an extreme amount of weight in such a short period of time. No, and I wouldn't call it extreme. It was just like it. It was it was a lot. But I mean, when I first started working out, I dropped like twelve pounds in two weeks. When I first first started like hitting it hard with the diet so the fact that he lost like that much weight it wasn't like I said it was it was not a surprising amount I just didn't want it to be like a sustained amount but no I didn't think anything weird of it just because of like how inner knitted I am with the like workout community and I know like this is possible but it just he, the thing that concerned me about it, I guess, and it wasn't even concerned, but the thing that, like, kind of red-lighted me, like, hey, this might be con carrying on, is the fact that his macros were, like, pretty dialed in. Like, I wrote them, and he, like, didn't stay exactly on them, but his calorie intake was about where it needed to be, my experience anyways, for, like, what he was trying to achieve. And so, I don't know, he didn't seem to have a problem with it. He liked where he was at with all of that. So that was your main conversation Saturday? That was like a big chunk while we were there is like us actually going through. Because I was like going through each item like why do you have, why are your ratios off? Do you I know where his kids or wife were that night? On Saturday? Yeah, his kid. Well, you know his kids are with the babysitter. Do you know where his wife is? She's in Arizona. Okay, how do you know that? I could hang out at my house, but we went out a few times. I have dates for everything, and okay. I can give you that once yeah. I'm done with this. Um, so, um, the reason that this caught my attention was not because of the gift cards. It was the lack of the gift cards. So, when we went out to dinner, he went to pay the check, and I noticed that instead of using one of the Anadarko gift cards, he had a baby blue credit card in his hand that he used to pay. Okay. And I just remember thinking to myself, like, why isn't he using any of those gift cards? I'm pretty sure he still has a balance on one of those, but I couldn't remember. And then I was just like, I was like, maybe, because, you know, at this point, at this point, he had made it clear to me that they were, like, filing for divorce. Like, it was, like, done. So I was like, well, maybe... He just doesn't really care anymore, you know? And But then another part of me was like, but technically, they're still together, so why would he do that? And, like, I just, I didn't ask, because, like, at, he had made it sound like by that Saturday that they were so far removed from each other that I was like, it's plausible that now he's just not, like, has nothing to cover up, you know? But then at the same time, I still feel like, until your divorce is 100% completely final and you're out of that house, 
why would you do that? Sure. I mean, so again, I didn't So you just found it was a little bit suspicious um, that he used a credit card versus the, um, the gift card. And this past Saturday, we went to, um, what is the name of that bar that we used to go to? It's not the same, the Lazy Dog, but it's the one off of 144th and 925. I think it's 144th up there. And it's the Lazy Dog? Yes. Um, did he ever mention a Rockies game that night? Um, no, I don't think so. But there was a, there was a, um, the Broncos were playing. Okay. Which we couldn't see because they sat us in really crappy spots, but it's okay because it's preseason. <laughs> but, um... So, you went, do you recall what time you went there? Mm, no. I remember, well, kind of. So, he had to get a babysitter that night. Do you know who that was? Uh, somebody who's really young. I remember I asked him who his babysitter was, and he's like, we have two. This girl's only 17, but the other one's out of town, so this girl's going to stay... And she doesn't do overnights, so i got to be back by 10. And I remember her saying that, and him saying that. And I I don't know what time he got to my house. It was between, I want to say, like, 5.30. It might have been 5, but I don't think so. Because I think the babysitter, if I remember correctly, showed up at, like, 4.30 or something. And he was like, I want to spend time getting my kids acclimated to her, and then I will come. So her ch his children didn't even know her? Oh, no, they knew her, but he was saying, like, he likes to, like stay there for a little while while he doesn't just like walk out the door when okay. they show up it's like a transitional thing and so um that's why i'm saying i don't know how long it was i want to say like 5 30 and then he had to be back by 10 so he left at like nine something to be back by 10. so, so probably he picked like, you up what was he driving no he didn't pick me up he came to my house we drove my truck okay so you he gets to your house you know what he was driving to get to your house um off the top of my head i don't remember um i Pretty sure he usually drives that Lexus, but he doesn't always park it in my. I guess my question for you is, would it show her leaving spaces. with the kids? Did you so have any where alerts? you guys pick me up at? A lot of times they'll just park out there. Did you have any alerts today room. with that? Okay. Um, so that kind of works. Does so it that he's, only record when the doorbell rings or any kind of someone? Like, um, but off the top of my head, I don't know what he was driving. What kind of truck do you drive? I drive a uh, Toyota 4Runner. So you guys take your forerunner and get to the lazy dog. Yep. And you said they sat in you in crappy. In the, uh, right, right. Where, where, where were you inside? We the were bar? when you walk in, you just hang a right, and we were like one of the first two booths on the right. When you walk in the door, you just—it's just not a—it's a good spot, but just not for the TVs. And we actually went to the other lazy dog. We went to the one that you and me go to. Where's that on Federal? And 100. And it's 120th and Federal, and we went there, and they have a different menu. And I was like, I don't need this food. So we should go to the other one. So initially you go to the 120th yes. location. Did and you actually get seated? Uh, kind of, sort of. They were like cleaning off a table and we were standing there just kind of looking at the beer menu and the food menu. And I was like, I don't want this. Fuck this so morning, we left. So 148 on here. Probably. And the only thing that was weird there, was six, that the garage door set as left open the other one. after I left. And it might have been the sensor, but like for my phone doesn't show when it went for your alarm. Yeah, it doesn't show. And who's your alarm through? Okay. So that's the Nikki, her friend, that came here about 12 10. She's at the garage door shop. Probably. We didn't stay for dessert. So I don't know. Were you going to hang out out there or you want to come in here? I've never been to the lazy dog.